Good morning, good morning, Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I'll know that you're watching. And if you're tuning in for the first time, type a number one in the comments so I'll know that you're watching. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Great morning. Come on in with a heart of worship this morning. Good morning, everyone. Great morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in with a heart of worship. Go ahead and type in the comments. God did it again. And we are here to worship you. <laughs> you. Thank you. Good morning. Don't forget to share out the broadcast. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Great morning, everyone. Good morning. I'll type in the comments. God did it again. And Lord, we've come to worship you. <laughs> to worship you. After you've shared, type in hashtag shared in the comments. Good morning. You have helped us. You have helped us. Good morning. Or afternoon or evening, whatever time you're watching the replay. <laughs> else come to worship the Lord this morning? Say, Lord, we've come to worship you. Oh, yeah. mm, he allowed us to see another day. See how far he's brought us. about how far he's brought you. else thankful this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, Lord. We're thankful for another day to worship you. We get to worship the Lord. Good morning, 
everyone. Good morning. Good morning. When I tell you all that song has been on replay and I will share it for as long as the Lord leads me to. Um, it's just something, you know, every now and then the Lord will just give you this song that you just can't get past. Um, I woke up in the morning on January 1st and it was uploaded to YouTube and I played it and it has literally been on replay, just helping me to stay in a constant state of thankfulness, just thinking about how far the Lord has brought me, I'm telling you. <laughs> it is just so important to stay in a constant place of thankfulness, a constant place of worship and whatever you need to do. Um, to keep you in that place, even if that's replaying the same one song that ministers to your soul over and over and over again, play it over and over and over again. Um, so anyway, good morning. Uh, my name is Keisha Johnson. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory, our time of morning devotion to the Lord. I believe that there's no better way to start the day. If you agree with me, say I agree in the comments. Um, if you're new to the broadcast, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Go ahead and type the number one in the comments um, so that we can welcome you. Uh, we are go reading through the where. Um, on our fourth year of reading through the one year Bible. Did you say fourth year? Are you reading through the one year Bible again? Yes, one Bible, one word, and we have chosen to read the one year Bible reading plan. It's a portion of the Old Testament, New Testament, a small portion of the Psalms and Proverbs, and I absolutely love this reading plan. And with that said, as I'll continue to say, we are not in bondage to the one year Bible reading plan. It's just a great guide that helps us to get in the word each morning uh, for 20 minutes a day. Y'all type in the comments, hashtag 20 minutes. It literally takes 15 to 20 minutes to read the word. Why am I sharing that? Because there is absolutely no excuse, right? God has given all of us 24 hours in a day. And how many times have we said, I'm too busy, right? We believe the lie that we're too busy to spend time reading the word, although we spend more than 15 to 20 minutes doing other things, right? And I always say, it's not a time issue. It is a heart issue. It's a matter of the heart because believe you me, when I tell you, we make time <laughs> for the things that are important to us. And when I realized that, you know, me saying, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time, but yet I made time. Listen, I would, I'll spend more than 15 to 20 minutes sitting in line at Starbucks. <laughs> To get, a, you know, to get my Starbucks drink, but yet we don't have time to read the word. So that's enough of that. Um, you know, I just wanted to start off reminding us that this is not a time issue. It's a heart issue. So when you find yourself saying, I don't have time, think about that. All right. So I love you all. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin to type at least one thing. And I saw that you all were already doing this, but if you have not yet, yes, it is true. Um, type at least one thing. And, and let me tell you all, and I share that because when I share it, when I realized that that completely changed my life. And I think about that when it comes to anything that I know that I should be doing. And then the enemy wants me to believe the lie that I don't have time, you know, like we don't have time to read our word, all of the things, right? Um, that, that we know that we should be doing to care for our mind, to care for our body, to care for our spirit. We say we don't have time, but all the things that we enjoy doing, the things that we want to do, we have all the time in the world for it. And when I realized that, I was like, wait a minute, when it comes to working out, I'm like, I don't have time. When it comes to reading my word, I don't have time. When it comes to go grocery shopping to pick up healthy foods, I don't have time. And I remembered I had to sit and think about that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why is it that when it comes to these things, I'm always saying I don't have the time. And then when I realized that it was really a heart issue and not a time issue, that completely changed my life, completely changed my life. So um, I just want you to think about that. And I need you to say it's not a time issue. It's a heart issue. I promise you it'll change your life. Um, so Father, we honor you. Go ahead and type at least one thing in the comments. Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you 
for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you protected us from. You allowed us to see another day and we say thank you. Thank you for another opportunity to come together and to fellowship and to spend time in your word and to worship you on this morning. There's no better way to start the day than with you and we are so incredibly thankful. We're thankful for life. Yes, we're thankful for health. We're thankful for a sound mind. We are so thankful for another chance to get it right. Amen. Thankful for another chance to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. That's right. It's not a time issue. It's a heart issue, and it truly is. It's just a matter of the heart. What is it that's is it important to you? Is it important to you? All right, so we're going to go ahead. And I'm going to pull up the one-year Bible. Uh, and we will dive in. Um, I had a couple of questions again, and I, I, I'll share this. Um, there are a few of you that went um, to Amazon to look for the one year Bible, and you see that the cover is different. They changed the cover, but um, I'll say again that the cover looks different. I'm a little sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this has been the cover for so long. I don't know why they changed it, uh, but the the layout is still the same. So even if your cover does not look exactly like this, as long as the publisher is Tyndale, well, I can't even say as if green leaves anymore because it, it might not. As long as the publisher is Tyndale and you see that it says New Living Translation and it has this one year Bible logo. Right. There are many Bibles out there that say that they're one year Bible reading plan. But you see this right here is an official logo. And as long as you see this logo, then it has to be the right Bible. All right. So let me get this pulled out January 5th and we will dive in. Y'all ready? <laughs> January 5th. Oh, Our reading I forgot in the to Old do Testament this, today will come from the book of Genesis. Hands. Chapter 11, verse 1. We'll go through chapter 13, verse 4. Man seeks unity and notoriety. And he tries to Good accomplish morning, his things by his own wisdom and strength. Lucifer wanted to be like I God. Saw it. And man wanted to make a name for himself. But only God can make a person's name truly great. Mm -hmm. I'll type in the Mabel, comments, God is going to make my name great. It means confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. Babylon will appear often in the biblical record as the enemy of God's people. You see, wherever there's confusion, the spirit of Babylon, the world, and the flesh is at work. There we go. Ultimately, the whole Babylonian system will be destroyed. Thank the you. confusion of tongues that began at Babel were reversed at Pentecost. A descendant of Ham, an Ethiopian, was saved in Acts chapter 8. A descendant of Shem, Paul, was saved in Acts chapter 9, and the Type Gentile number two of the volume of is okay. were saved in Acts 10. Unity is not worked up by man. It is sent down by God. As we share the gospel with others, we're helping to unite what sin has torn apart. Christians are indeed the peacemakers of the world. We'll read in Genesis chapter 12 that God's word leads to faith. Abram was an idolater when God called him revealed his glory to him and spoke to him. Abram turned from vain idols to walk with the Lord. And all of this was by God's grace. Okay, the of I the just word turned it up a little. Faith. Again, God's creative word is at work. We'll see that faith leads to obedience. The New Testament states, by faith, Abraham obeyed. I will show you, I will make you, I will bless you. Those were all of God's promises, and Abram believed. It has well been said that faith is not believing in spite of evidence. It is obeying in spite Don't of consequences. Don't forget to share the broadcast. The proof of faith is obedience. For true faith always leads to works. Hearing leads to heeding. We'll also read that obedience leads to blessing. We're told nothing about the journey, which must have been very difficult. But we are told that God met Abram when he arrived and gave him a new promise. God always goes before us and has his word ready to encourage us. Mm -hmm. From now on, Abram's life will be marked by the presence of the tent that is a pilgrim on earth and uh, the altar, citizen of heaven. Good morning. And we'll see the blessing leads to testing. 
faith is always tested for at least three reasons. To prove whether our faith is real, to help our faith grow, and to bring glory to the Lord. Imagine a famine in the very land where God led him. We can be in the will of God and still suffer trials. It's been said that faith is living without scheming. But Abram began to scheme. He was walking by sight and not by faith. And it cost him his testimony and almost his wife. Note that Abram had neither a tent nor an altar in Egypt. Good morning. Going down to Egypt is Bible language for getting out of the will of God. Mm-hmm. Well, God blessed Abram that he might be a blessing. You see, through Abram and his descendants, the whole world has been blessed. Whenever God gives you a blessing, it's so that you might be a blessing to others. God's blessings are not luxuries. They mm -hmm. are opportunities. Mm -hmm. And with that, let's begin our reading today here in the Old Testament. January 5th. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, through chapter 13, verse 4. At one time, the whole world spoke a single language and used the same words. As the people migrated eastward, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. They began to talk about construction projects. Come, they said, let's make great piles of burnt brick and collect natural asphalt to use as mortar. Let's build a great city with a tower that reaches to the skies, a monument to our greatness. This will bring us together and keep us from scattering all over the world. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, if they can accomplish this when they have just begun to take advantage of their common language and political unity, just think of what they will do later. Nothing will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down and give them different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the earth, and that ended the building of the city. That is why the city was called Babel, because it was there that the Lord confused the people by giving them many languages, thus scattering them across the earth. This is the history of Shem's family. Good morning. When Shem was 100 years old, his son Arphaxad was born. This happened two years after the flood. Good morning. After the birth of Arphaxad, Shem lived another 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad was 35 years old, his son Shelah was born. After the birth of Shelah, Arphaxad lived another 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah was 30 years old, his son Eber was born. After the birth of Eber, Shelah lived another 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber was 34 years old, his son Peleg was born. After the birth of Peleg, Eber lived another 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg was 30 years old, his son Reu was born. After the birth of Reu, Peleg lived another 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Reu was 32 years old, his son Serug was born. After the birth of Serug, Reu lived another 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Serug was 30 years old, his son Nahor was born. After the birth of Nahor, Serug lived another 200 years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor was 29 years old, his son Tirah was born. After the birth of Tirah, Nahor lived another 119 years and had other sons and daughters. When Tirah was 70 years old, he became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. This is the history of Tirah's family. Tirah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran had a son named Lot. But while Haran was still young, he died in Ur of the Chaldeans the place of his birth. He was survived by Terah, his father. Meanwhile, Abram married Sarai, and his brother Nahor married Milcah. The daughter of their brother, Haran, Milcah had a sister named Iscah. Now Sarai was not able to have any children. Terah took his son, Abram, his daughter-in-law, Sarai, and his grandson, Lot, his son Haran's child. 
and left Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. But they stopped instead at the village of Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years and died while still at Haran. Then the Lord told Abram, Leave your country, your relatives, and your father's house, and go to the land that I will show you. I will cause you to become the father of a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and I will make you a blessing to others. I will bless See, those God who God is bless making you me a blessing to others. Curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people who had joined his household at Haran, and finally arrived in Canaan. Traveling through Canaan, they came to a place near Shechem and set up camp beside the oak at Morath. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I am going to give this land to your offspring. And Abram built an altar there to commemorate the Lord's visit. After that, Abram traveled southward and set up camp in the hill country between Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar and worshipped the Lord. Then Abram traveled south by stages toward the Negev. At that time, there was a severe famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to wait it out. As he was approaching the borders of Egypt, Abram said to Sarai, You are a very beautiful woman. Amen. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Let's kill him, then we can have her. But if you say you are my sister, then the Egyptians will treat me well because of their interest in you, and they will spare my life. And sure enough, when they arrived in Egypt, everyone spoke of her beauty. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to their king, the Pharaoh, and she was taken into his harem. Then Pharaoh gave Abram many gifts because of her. Sheep, cattle, donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. But the Lord sent a terrible plague upon Pharaoh's household because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called for Abram and accused him sharply. What is this you have done to me, he demanded. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why were you willing to let me marry her, saying she was your sister? Here is your wife. Take her and be gone. Pharaoh sent them out of the country under armed escort. Abram and his wife, with all their household and belongings. So they left Egypt Good morning. and traveled north into the Negev, Abram with his wife and Lot and all that they owned. For Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. Then they continued traveling by stages toward Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai where they had camped before. This was the place where Abram had built the altar, and there he again worshipped the Lord. Y'all type in the comments, I will worship the Lord. January 5th. Our reading in the New Testament today will come from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 26. Here's what's going on there. We're going to read about citizens. We enter the kingdom through the new birth. But we enjoy the kingdom by living for those things yes, that Anna. please God the mm -hmm. most. The world and worldly believers would disagree with Christ's description of a blessed, happy person. But the description is true just the same. Amen. God majors on character, and so should we. Mm -hmm. We'll read about salt and light here in Matthew 5. Tasteless salt and hidden light are good for nothing. They don't accomplish anything. Salt arrests decay in our world, and light banishes darkness. Salt is hidden, but light is visible. Both are mm. needed in the world, and both must give of themselves in order to serve. Mm -hmm. And we'll read about worshipers. Good morning. 
If you bring anger to the altar, you cannot worship God. So get rid of the anger quickly. Angry feelings lead to angry words and deeds. Ooh, yes. And the result could be murder. Because in anger is the spirit of murder. Ask me how I and know. And now let's begin our reading today here in the New Testament. Ooh, let me pause this. Can I pause this? And when that says anger may lead to murder, that may not mean like physically murdering somebody, but that could be murdering someone's character, murdering all kind of things. Anger is a spirit and we must let it go. There's a reason why the word of God tells us that. You know, I battled with that spirit for a very, very long time. You all know that I've shared that a lot. Um, so I just kind of wanted to say that. That was very deep. I need to read that again. Sorry. Very thin. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 26. One day as the crowds were gathering, Jesus went up the mountainside with his disciples and sat down to teach them. This is what he taught them. God blesses those who realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is given to them. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are gentle and lowly, for the whole earth will belong to them. God blesses those who are hungry and thirsty for justice, for they will receive it in full. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted because they live for God. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when you are mocked and persecuted and lied about because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted too. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it useful again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a mountain, glowing in the night for all to see. Don't hide your light under a basket. Instead, put it on a stand and let it shine for all. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses I'm in the back with the or the writings of the she prophets. Sent me a text. No, just I came listening. to fulfill them. I assure you, until heaven and earth disappear, even the smallest detail of God's law will remain until its purpose is achieved. So, if you break the smallest commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's law and teaches them will be great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless you obey God better than the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees do, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven at all. You have heard that the law of Moses says, Do not murder if you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the high council. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you're standing before the altar in the temple, offering a sacrifice to God, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you? Leave your sacrifice there beside the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Come to terms quickly with your enemy before it is too late, and you are dragged into court, handed over to an officer, and thrown in jail. I assure you that you won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. Psalm chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. For the choir director, Psalm of David, to be accompanied by the flute. 
O Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For I will never pray to anyone but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my requests to you and wait expectant. O oh God, you take no pleasure in wickedness. You cannot tolerate the slightest sin. Therefore, Sorry. the proud will not be allowed to stand in your presence. For you hate all who do evil. You will destroy those who tell lies. The Lord detests murderers and deceivers. Because of your unfailing love, I can enter your house. With deepest awe, I will worship at your temple. Lead me in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Tell me clearly what to do, and show me which way to turn. My enemies cannot speak one truthful word. Their deepest desire is to destroy others. Their talk is foul, like the stench from an open grave. Their speech is filled with flattery. O oh God, declare them guilty. Let them be caught in their own traps. Drive them away because of their many sins, for they rebel against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Protect them, so all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O oh Lord, Surrounding them with your shield of love. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 24 through 28. I, wisdom, called you so often, but you didn't come. I reached out to you, but you paid no attention. You ignored my advice and rejected the correction I offered. So I will laugh when you are in trouble. I will mock you. When disaster overtakes you, when calamity overcomes you like a storm, when you are engulfed by trouble, and when anguish and distress overwhelm you, I will not answer when they cry for help. Even though they did, anxiously search for me, they will not find me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. So sorry about that, y'all. I had to go back there. My uh, Soraya actually sent me a text because she was trying to get my attention back here knowing I was on live. So I have a little emergency. I'm, I'm, I will let you all know by 530, ladies in the wellness community, if we're going to be able to... No, 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 no. I'm going to have everything set up. Never mind, never mind, never mind. It's okay. All is well. But I'm not sure if I'll be live for class at 8 o'clock. But I will let you all know. I may have to leave out. Um, nothing is open right now. So we'll, our schedule will remain the same from 530 to 8. Um, but I, I'm not sure if I'll be live in the group for class at 8 o'clock. Um, see what happens when Anthony's not home. I'm like, everything is just happening. I'm like, Lord, the dog's acting crazy. Everything's going on. So sorry about that. Um, takeaways. We ha I have a couple of questions. Let me just... All is well. Y'all type that in the comments. All is well. All is well. All is well. All right, so um, our personal devotion time after the broadcast, we want to make sure, yes, yes, but um, everything's closed right now, so I can't go out and get anything. So um, personal devotion, y'all type that in the comments. We want to make sure that we are spending our time of personal devotion once we're done reading and that we're not just reading the word, right? Throwing our Bible to the side, checking it off our to-do list. Uh, again, I'll say we read the word for information, for transformation, not just information. And true transformation happens when we are spending time with the Lord in our time of personal devotion. Like getting together in community is great, but true change and transformation happens during those times of personal devotion where we're digging deep and doing the hard work, right? So three questions I have 
um, for us to ask today. And then I have a few things that I wrote down to share and we're gonna um, stay on track and get that done. All right, so the first question um, I want you to ask yourself and just, and this is not about us, this part is not about us right here. Who could use a ray of light from my life today? Who can use a ray of light from my life today? If you don't know, just ask the Lord, you know, Father, who can use a ray of light today? Who can I be a blessing to today, right? We read that we are called to be the salt and the light of the earth, right? The, the, the earth needs both. So who can I be a ray of light to today? Um, second question, um, what can I do to salt the world, whatever that may look like for you? And that is definitely a question you want to ask the Father, like how can I be salt and light today? Who needs a ray of light from my life today and what can I do to salt the world today? And then the third thing, um, again, this is not about us either, is just spend some time praising God for the moments in our lives that he blessed us um, and that he blessed our path due to us. Who can I? Yes. Um, praise God for the moments in our lives when he blessed our path because we heeded his direction. Think of a time where you know that the Lord has blessed your path because you took heed to his direction. You took heed to his instruction, right? We read and we asked the Lord, we read today. Um, what verse was it? Um, I highlighted it. Verse 8, Psalm 5, 8. Lead me in your right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Make my way plain, make my make your way plain for me to follow. So what just spend some time thinking about a time where you know that the Lord has blessed your path because you took heed to his direction. And that was one of my prayers, and I put up a post. Um, that the Lord would guide my steps like all of 2022. I mean, it should be like that always, but specifically in 2022. Are y'all still with me? I don't see any comments rolling. Are y'all still here? Make sure I'm not frozen. Maybe y'all are writing. Um, and you all also can begin to share your takeaways in the comments, something that stood out to you. So there were quite a few things that Tom Dooley, and who's Tom Dooley? Um, for those of you that may be new, Tom Dooley is the one that does the narration um, before the one-year Bible readings. And he's no longer with us. He went on to be with the Lord somewhere around 2010 or 2011. But I'm so thankful for these audios because they continue to be a blessing, right? Year after year after year as we go through these. And it's so helpful um, just listening and hearing his narrations um, as we are reading the one-year Bible. Um, and so he said, he said a couple of things. Uh, and I loved, he said, uh, the three reasons, he gave us three reasons that our faith is tested. Three reasons that our faith is tested. If y'all are still with me, type a number three in the comments. Three reasons that our faith is tested. Number one, um, to prove if it's real, right? Three reasons why our faith is tested. Number one, to prove um, if our faith is real. <laughs> we'll know, right? When our faith is tested, we'll know. <laughs> Uh, the second reason that our faith is tested is to grow our faith. I love I love this. That's why I wrote it down. I wanted to make sure y'all got it. And then the third reason that our faith is tested is to bring glory to the Lord, to bring glory to the Lord. So uh, that's, yep, yeah, I wanted to write that down. And then when he talked about getting rid of all anger, um, and the verse for that is Ephesians 4.31 where it tells us to get rid of all anger, all wrath, all malice. Um, so that was Ephesians 4.31, which I'm going to go back and read. Well, depending on what my day looks like now, um, go back and read and spend some time reading. So those are a few things. Uh, let's see, it's 5.09. Um, I'll go ahead and work through what I, what I, what I wanted to share today. So uh, Psalm 5.11. Someone type that in the comments for me. Psalm 511 says, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them that all who love your name may be filled with joy. Someone type in the comments, hashtag joy. God wants us to 
experience his joy no matter what it is that could possibly go on in your life right now God wants us to experience his joy and Psalm 34 4 says then I will go to the altar of God to God my exceeding joy and I will praise you with the love of God my God and so what is the joy of the Lord? What is the joy of the Lord? I don't, it's not necessarily what we think it is because you're like, how can I be in the midst of this storm and this turmoil and all of this stuff that may be going on in my life and still have joy? I'm not feeling too good. I'm not feeling too happy about what's going on right now. The first thing, the joy of the Lord, it is not a feeling. It is not a feeling. I have learned that the joy of the Lord is not a feeling. So what does that mean? Whatever going, whatever it is that's going on in your life, you can ex still experience the joy of the Lord because it's not a feeling. Not only is it not a feeling, it is unbreakable, right? The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. So it is unbreakable. Breakable. Somebody type in the comments, hashtag unbreakable. All right. The joy of the Lord is firm. The joy of the Lord is unshakable. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely our strength. Definitely our strength. And that our strength, right? The very thing that gets us through in the midst of the storm and a turmoil. Listen, I don't even think I would be here today if it were not for the joy of the Lord right? That Dion said, which is my strength. Listen, <laughs> I don't think I would be sitting here before you right now if it were not for the joy of the Lord. Y'all type in the comments, God, I thank you for your joy. And it's also a strong conviction knowing that he's working everything out for our good. So if you are in the midst of a situation, right? That's right. Unbreakable. Um, the joy of the Lord is a strong conviction, knowing with knowing deep down in your knowing that he's working all things out for your good. And he tells us that in his word anyway, right? He works all things together for our good. So how do we grow in the joy of the Lord? Um, first, we grow through prayer. We grow in the joy of the Lord through prayer. Um, and a scripture reference for that is Hebrews 4.16. Hebrews 4.16. Um, we grow in the joy of the Lord through his word, y'all. I'm telling you what we all do here every day. It's not a small thing. It's not a small thing. Listen, if you have been reading through this one year Bible with me, even just one year, if you've read, you know, all of year one, two, three, you cannot tell me that your life looks exactly the same before you started reading with us through the one year Bible. You cannot tell. There's no way your life will still look the same, Right. And so uh, we grow in the joy of the Lord through God's word. Scripture references for that. If you're type, can someone type this in the comments? It's Psalm 119 verses 14 through 16. Psalm 119 verses 14 through 16. And the third way that we grow in the joy of the Lord is through Holy Spirit, through Holy Spirit. And the scripture references for that is Ephesians 3 verses 18 through 19. And when it is when Holy Spirit right opens our eyes that we are filled with joy, the joy of the Lord. Oh, I have five. So the fourth way that we grow in the joy of the Lord is by meditating on the characters of God, by meditating on the character of God. And scripture reference for that is Lamentations 3 verses 21 through 23. If someone can type that in the comments, Lamentations 3, verses 21 through 23. And then number five is by meditating. Y'all type in meditating. By meditating on the word of God. And a scripture reference for that is Luke 7, verse 47. Luke 7, verse 47. So my prayer for all of us is that we... Oh... Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. Melissa, so my prayer is that we all not only uh, grow in the joy of the Lord, but that we continue to experience the joy of the Lord. And remember, the world didn't give it, right? Is that a song? 
or is that in the Bible somewhere? Don't laugh at me. I can't think this morning. No, I can think this morning. I just don't remember. Is that just a song that we sung or is a verse in the word? <laughs> Listen, y'all don't judge me. I know that was a song I used to sing in children's church. And I remember the world didn't give it to me. Oh, okay. It is just a song. I was like, I think that's just a song. I'm sorry. Don't judge me, y'all. All right. So do we have a declaration for today? I'm laughing at myself out loud in my head because I'm like, did I really just ask that out loud? I thought it was a song, but I'm like, is that in the word or is that just a song? I think that's just a song. <laughs> All right, so um, our declaration for today is I decree and declare that God is the source of all my joy. That's what I thought. I think I knew the answer to that. That really wasn't supposed to be a question that came out my mouth out loud, but all is well. I decree and declare God is the source of all my joy. Hashtag waking early for his glory. So if someone can type our declaration for today, I decree and declare that God, listen, I don't know everything that's in here. <laughs> I decree and declare that God is the source of all my joy. And I can honestly tell you all that I can even see my growth, right, in that area of my growth and the joy of the Lord because things that used to bother me, things that used to steal my joy, no longer steals my joy. Why? Because I continue to practice these principles, right? And because of that, I continue to grow in the joy of the Lord. And we must practice the principles to participate in the promise, right? I just gave us five principles, five ways that we can continue to grow in the joy of the Lord. Uh, you said, did you think, you were you trying to figure that out too? Cheryl, is that what you mean? Uh, what was the scripture for number five? Luke 7, 47. Luke 7, 47. So we must practice the principles to participate in the promise, right? What is the promise? The joy of the Lord. If we practice these five principles and practice doing these five things. So again, we grow in the joy of the Lord through prayer, through his word, through Holy Spirit, which means we need to spend time with him, right? By meditating on the character of God and by meditating on his word. Um, I have, and, and I know that I truly over these years have truly continued to grow in the joy of the Lord really just by default because I, these are things that I practice anyway right um, yeah so by default right and so the Christian life it should be filled with joy right that doesn't mean that it should be easy and um, it's 518 so I know I have to get ready to log off so we can get ready for 530 but um, I believed the lie right um, when I first became a Christian I just I remember around the age 15 16 the day that I gave my life to the Lord and got baptized and just and I remember and I'll share this I remembered being in church that day and I was around 16 and just thinking when I go home everything is gonna be different right my whole life is gonna be different all of the things that were going on in my home you know all of the abuse all of it's gonna stop because I just gave my life to the Lord and I got baptized and y'all even at the age of 47 I could still remember back that very day the age of 16 when I went home and I was just like everything is still the same nothing has changed but today I gave my life to the Lord and I got baptized and I just thought you know I don't know if we were ever told that how we were made to believe that you know made to believe that when we became a Christian right when we became a follower of Jesus Christ when we gave our life to the Lord right that our life would be different that life would be easy it's not easy, but it should definitely be filled with joy. And remember, joy is not a feeling. We're not talking about being happy one day and not being happy when things don't go our way. Like, this should be filled with joy. Mm -hmm. And I remember it took some time for me to realize, wait a minute, just because we became a Christian doesn't necessarily mean that all of our problems are going to go away in an instant. So anyway, that's a long story. Did this bless anybody today? Did this bless anybody? All right, so I'm going to get us logged in and get us going um, for our morning routine. Um, and if I, it needs to be interrupted, I will let you all know. 
um, and I will let you know by eight o'clock. If I can't go live in the wellness group for our uh, class, I'll definitely post a video for you all. It just depends on if I need to leave out um, by eight or not. So I'll keep you all posted. So we're still on schedule for 830. So let's grab our water, change our clothes and get ready to move our bodies this morning. And then I'll keep you all updated. All right. So I pray that you all were blessed today. Um, I know that I was. All right. So let's see what are y'all saying. That's right. Joy is not a feeling. At one time I thought it was. I thought that joy. Did I take all of my vitamins and stuff? I believe I did. Is your name pronounced unique or eunuch? You have a great day as well. Yes. Ooh, it took me some time. I remember being so discouraged. I remember even being offended. Like, wait a minute, I did this and, you know, you didn't take all of my problems away, you know? So you all, let me ask you all, if any of you are on here and you believed that, do you believe, do you think that's something that we were taught or is that something that we just picked up and just kind of made up in our own heads because I don't think I ever remember anyone telling me that but I just can't remember why I felt so strongly and why it is that so many people believe that or it could just be me that believed that maybe it's just me is there anyone else on here that believed that I'll stay on for two more minutes Oh, Shanika. Okay. Shanika. Okay. I'll try to remember that. It's just a thought. Okay. So that's something that we were, that we just thought. I wonder why I thought that. I don't know. I'm going to think about that some more. It's just something that you picked up. You know, I'm going to think some more about that. <clears throat> I'm going to think about that some more. So anyway, that's not even for this live right now. Sometimes my, you know, I just start thinking. So that's definitely a conversation that it was something we're told that everything would be made new. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And you know, this was just a real honest question. I had to think about that for a minute. I'm like, is that something that we were taught? Or is that just something that we just picked up on somehow? But that makes a lot of sense, Melinda. That makes a lot of sense. It was something we're told that everything would be made new. Mm hmm. My grandparents would say when you give your life to the Lord, your life will change. And maybe we just thought that everything was just going to change for the better in an instant. But anyway, listen, I'm getting way too deep into this. That's this. I was taught that growing up. Okay. And, and the reason, and I just remember, you know, having to deal with my anger regarding that being so upset, feeling so offended because I was just like, but they told me, I remember, you know, like they told me that everything would change. Who it's they, I'm not sure. Maybe I just heard it from a pastor in church in a pulpit. I don't know. Maybe my grandmother, who knows? And I remember having to battle that anger um, for quite some time when I realized that my life, right, was still pure hell. And it was pure hell for a long time. And not realizing that it wasn't until I took responsibility for my actions, right? It doesn't matter what my mama did. It doesn't matter what my daddy did. It doesn't matter what they did, didn't do. It doesn't matter what happened to me. Keisha Johnson, you must take control of your life. You must take control of your own actions. And it wasn't until I did that. It wasn't, take, it wasn't until I took responsibility that my life... Uh, begin to change right and I had to do the work somebody say you got to do the work and what I do know is we do our part God is always faithful to do his right and I think I just thought that because I did this one thing because I prayed this prayer and it's also made to seem like all you have to do is pray this simple prayer and I and you know and I, I it kind of bothers me when I hear people say all you have to do is pray this simple prayer no, no, no. That's not all you have to do. That's where it begins, but that's not all you have to do. And so I think because I've heard so many times, all you have to do is pray this simple prayer. Repeat after me, not realizing that when we pray this prayer, right? <laughs> Y'all, I gotta go. It's 524, but we have to do the work. Mm. See, so many of us are left feeling angry 
because of that. So anyway, this is a whole nother conversation for another day. Um, this just gave me some things to think about today. So this was good. So I love you all. Gotta run. Bye. And ladies, I'll be logged in at 530. <clears throat> Have a great day, y'all. Did I give out a declaration? I did. I decree and declare God is the source of all my joy. All right. Bye, y'all.